The tyrant of Tallahassee is at it again. After habitually using the power of the governor's office to punish businesses for disagreeing with him, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is now setting his sights on elected officials in the Sunshine State. Hillsborough County State Attorney Andrew Warren, who was elected twice by his constituents, I should note, well, he vowed not to prosecute doctors for performing abortions or gender-related care. Now, this is despite Florida's law banning women from having that ability to make decisions about their own bodies after 15 weeks of pregnancy. Ron DeSantis responded by suspending Warren from office. The prosecutor has now sued in an effort to get his job back, claiming First Amendment protections and arguing the Florida abortion law is unconstitutional. In response, a spokesperson for Governor DeSantis said, quote, it's not surprising Warren, who was suspended for refusing to follow the law, would file a legally baseless lawsuit challenging his suspension. We look forward to responding in court, even though they just responded via statement. Joining me now is the suspended Hillsborough County State Attorney, Andrew Warren. Welcome to you, Mr. Warren. OK, I, I want to I wanna start where that little statement left off. You made this decision to not uphold what I would call an unjust law of the state at great professional risk. Tell us what led you to that decision. Well, let's be clear. I mean, I was speaking out on two issues, abortion and gender-affirming health care, because I care about what happens in our criminal justice system. And I felt like these laws, which hadn't even been passed yet, were not going to make our community safer. And so what I did is I voiced my opposition to legislation like elected officials do all the time. And what's ironic about this is I haven't been suspended for anything that I've done. No cases have come before me on either of these issues. I and mean, this is what makes this so absurd. I'm being suspended because I'm not enforcing phantom laws. One is unconstitutional, someone, as you pointed out. The one doesn't even exist yet. The only place where these laws exist that I'm supposedly not enforcing are in the governor's imagination. Hmm. Well, you are now challenging the suspension in court. Is that the case that you're going to make, that you actually have not done anything and therefore there was no basis for your suspension? Well, we filed a challenge on two bases. One is because the governor violated my First Amendment rights to free speech by speaking out against these his favorite culture war issues. And secondly, because he's abusing the power granted to him under the Florida Constitution to suspend an elected official without any legal justification. And we've, look, we've gotten so much support for this because people recognize the threat this poses to our democracy. You can come join us at andrewwarrenfl.com. But the point of the lawsuit is to make sure that even though Ron DeSantis is the governor of Florida, the First Amendment still has meaning, the rule of law still has meaning, and elections still have meaning. Have you thought about what the national implications could be if your suspension is upheld? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is so much more about than just my position. This is about the governor overthrowing the results of a fair and free election, throwing out the votes of 370,000 Floridians who voted for me in 2020. And it's hard to overstate the danger that this poses to democracy. If a governor can just suspend an elected official and replace them with whoever he wants for any reason whatsoever, what's the point of having elections? What's left of our democracy? And we've seen now Governor DeSantis, who's supposed to be doing what's best for Floridians, spending his time in Pennsylvania, in Arizona, in New Mexico, campaigning with you know people who are at the January 6th insurrection, in talking about how he's suspending people that you know disagree with him and aren't going to do what he wants, this is a really dangerous precedent because we are worried that other states may follow suit and just nullify elections in their own states and throw out the votes of their own constituents. Mm, it is something to watch. Andrew Warren, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Now, the Florida governor's retribution against Andrew Warren is just one example of his use of the executive branch to boost his political leverage. At the recommendation of a grand jury, DeSantis suspended four members of the Broward County School Board for what the grand jury described as mismanagement of security funds that contributed to readiness failures in the 2018 Parkland shooting. Governor DeSantis, though, replaced these Democratic women with Republican men. 
These are appointments that do not come close to reflecting the attitudes in Broward County, which President Biden won by 30 points in the 2020 election, might I add. At least one of the ouster school board members has accused Ron DeSantis of exploiting the grand jury's report for political gain. So here to discuss, I brought an expert on what's going on in Tallahassee, Axios Tampa Bay reporter, Celine San Felice. Welcome back, Celine. Um, you just know everything that is happening in Florida. So can, can you just break down for the viewers, what does Governor DeSantis say his justification is for all of this? Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, so in the case of the Broward County School Board, uh, the Parkland Grand Jury Report actually did call for the removal of those school board members. Um, it literally did say that they need to go. Uh, but I mean, you can't ignore the fact that this is an opportunity for DeSantis to appoint more of his allies in a county with the most registered Democrats. So what are the streets saying in Broward County about DeSantis's new school board appointments? Yeah, I mean, it's it's very clear that these are going to be people who are going to align with his stance on things like don't say gay, um, you know, transgender students, CRT. So it looks like um, when when he says jump, they will jump, you know? So... Uh, Felice, I, I just really think this dovetails with something else that really struck me with what's happening in Florida. Um, Governor DeSantis endorsed 30 different candidates in school boards in this past primary. Um, and you don't usually see a governor wading into school board seats. Um, and he specifically endorsed people who um, championed restrictions of what Florida's teachers can discuss in the classroom. What do you really think the end game is here? Is the governor building political loyalty? Is it red meat for the base? Is it indoctrination? Make it make sense for us. So uh, DeSantis is being called a kingmaker in the school board situation. I mean, these are small races that are usually nonpartisan, but they are huge wins for him to stay in power, uh, you know, past his term as governor. And whatever happens in 2024, he will have influence in these small races and in these school boards, especially when his big platform has been what we've talked about, CRT, um, influencing uh, discussion on sexuality and gender in schools. And uh, Paul Manafort uh, called these wins like his bonuses to get rid of the left school curricula. So, um, you know, like I said, whatever happens to DeSantis, his influence is going to stick around. His influence is, it's, I mean, it's being seen throughout the state everywhere. Um, you said whatever happens to him, for folks that don't know, there's an election in Florida this November. He is on the ballot. He's going to face off against the Democratic nominee for governor, Charlie Crist. Celine, what do you think is, well, one, what are you hearing from DeSantis's team about Crist? Are they concerned? I would argue perhaps they're not, but maybe you've heard something else. And then what does the Crist campaign say their strategy is now? So, to be honest, I don't think that DeSantis is worried at all about Christ. Uh, you know, he's had really huge wins in terms of what he's been able to do, and it seems like Republicans are really happy with him. Uh, Christ is really fighting on the sort of huggy, um, kill him with kindness agenda. I mean, he is trying to cut at DeSantis and at DeSantis's agenda. He wants to bring Warren back in Hillsborough County. Um, he wants to reverse a lot of what DeSantis has done. But for the most part, he's trying to sort of appeal to people in the middle and appeal to people on the left who don't want these changes. But the, the question is, are their voices loud enough to, um, to, to cancel out what DeSantis has been doing? That is the question. Celine Sanfelice, always appreciate your insights. Thank you for coming back.